right, so today we are going to be building the honeydew uh, raised garden box uh, planter, garden planter. So first thing, I bought some material. We got about 14 cubic feet of soil that we'll be filling this thing up. It'll be five foot wide by two feet deep. And so I'm basically just using pressure treated deck boards, five quarter boards, and I've got them in 10 foot lengths. I'll cut them in five foot sections for the uh, actual long side. So there'll be three high on each side. And we'll get into that in a little bit, but basically all I needed was um, five of these 10 footers because um, I'll be able to cut one of them into two foot sections for the sides, one a little bit more. They're using four by four pressure treated posts for the legs. And I've got a single two by four by eight that I'll cut into sections for extra bracing uh, within the box. Um, then I've got a couple other details for the inside of the box, but we're gonna go ahead and section this wood up so that we can put it together. Okay, so I want to show you the rest of the materials that we're going to end up using. I just got some screen wire. This is just a, a, a lightweight aluminum, but it will end up holding some of the weight of the dirt in the bottom. Um, didn't need much of it, so I just got the cheapest roll that they had. We will be lining the entire inside of the box just to help protect the wood a little bit better so it doesn't rot as fast um with just some extra heavy duty plastic this is only two mil i got this in the painter section at um lowe's and then we'll be assembling the wood together with just an exterior grade wood screw so that it'll last a little bit longer won't want to rust i've already partitioned the wood up into sections so i did uh two of the uh five quarter board into two foot lengths and i did the other three into five foot lengths so we actually have uh, six total five foot lengths of five quarter board and then i cut the eight foot uh four by four pressure treated posts just directly in half they come a little bit over eight feet so you want to make sure you get them in half um, ultimately i'm gonna screw it together so that it's level with the uh, actual slab in my back um, patio but I wanted just to cut them in half completely. So other tools that you might gonna need to do the project is actually a tape measure, a pencil, and I use a speed square to scribe the line down the wood so as to get me a perfect uh, line for a cut. That's it. So a couple additional tools that you'll need is of course a circular saw. If you have a miter saw handy, that is really nice for cutting very straight lines. Um, I didn't have mine handy because uh, it's put away in storage right now, but circular saw works perfectly fine to cut up the wood. Um, if you have an impact driver for driving the screws, it makes your life a little easier. And then we're gonna actually fasten the, both the screen wire and the plastic inside the box with just a staple gun. So that'll make your life a lot easier too, so you don't have to like tack in roofing nails or anything like that to hold the plastic inside the box. Okay, so the easiest way that I'm thinking this will go is that I'm gonna lay out three of these on just my table work surface. I don't have a whole lot of room to work, so I'm gonna do one side at a time. So I'll lay three out, and I'm actually gonna put them together and line them up perfectly. Now, if your cuts were perfectly uh, you know, even, you're gonna end up with a perfect edge. Because this is an outdoor planter box, it doesn't matter if it's exactly perfect, so don't worry about that. But then you take your 16 inch cut two by four, so I cut uh, four pieces 16 inches out of my two by four, and there's nothing magical about this. Um, so what I'm gonna end up doing is just basically judging about a third in either direction, and then I'm gonna line it up with what I want to be the bottom right here and that leaves a little bit of a reveal so that our plastic can wrap up and over and our dirt will come up to about that level but it'll be even with the bottom and then i'm going to just pop some screws through this to hold this side together the legs will end up holding in the corners all right so as you can see i put four screws per plank on each upright i did go ahead and measure over 18 inches just so that it would be equidistance on either side and now that's going to be a side panel okay so what we are doing now is we decided what panel we wanted to be the front so we chose the better looking of the two panels uh, just based on the wood grain that looked good and we laid it flat down on the ground 
Now I'm laying it down such that the bottom of the support two by fours are here flush. And then what I'm gonna do is these four by fours, we cut down to 30 inches because that ended up being a nice height for my wife to be able to work. And we're going to end up putting glue down underneath the four by four and it's right up to the edge. So I'll show you on this one here. You can see that this four by four is right to the edge and it's gonna be glued underneath. Now, ideally you would put pocket screws in to hold it into place better. I don't have my pocket sc uh, screw jig readily available. Um, so I'm actually just gonna toenail it in to, to form some clamp pressure while the glue dries. But we're gonna put these panels together and, and show you what that looks like. Okay, as you can see, we went ahead and glued the legs into place and we toenailed them down to the actual long piece on both sides to give it some clamping power for the glue. Now, because these are gonna be on the sides and not very visible, these side pieces we put straight down. And as you can see from the outside over here, we actually just put screws straight in the outside. And I don't even feel the need to glue these in since it's got a really good gripping power from being able to go straight through the face. Um, if you, you know, are a little bit more uh, concerned about the style, you could definitely do some pocket screws on the inside would be plenty um, substantial to hold it together. But now what we're gonna end up doing is flipping it up on its end and putting in the uh, long bases to match how they are. We are keeping the back post at four foot tall. So we'll probably end up putting some caps on it and having some wire or string of some kind so that our vegetables can grow up on the string. Uh, but we are gonna keep the back feet at full four foot going past and up over the box. Right. Well, if you can't tell, it's super humid out here. I feel like I've jumped in the swimming pool, but we got the box together. So we just basically put the back panel on once we got these in place. So now if you'll come in, you can actually see that I have the support structures ready in the middle. What I'll end up doing with those is taking the leftover two foot pieces and from up underneath, I will be plating these here on both sides. Then I'm gonna put two more on either end uh, from the bottom up just to make the rudimentary floor that we'll be laying our screen wire over and then our plastic on top of that that'll have holes for drainage so we'll get back with you on that. All right so we got the box completely framed up. Uh, we went ahead and started putting in the screen wire down at the bottom so come take a look in here. So what I did was this is heavy gauge aluminum screen and as you can see I put a lot of staples in the substrate so that it would hold really well as that dirt uh, puts down pressure but it's also going to have that four mil plastic. I'm double layering the two mil plastic together to make it four mil. And so with the screen, the wood slats, as well as the four mil plastic, I think it's going to be substantial enough to hold the around 13 cubic feet of worth of three. So we got the box lined with plastic. We actually did the bottom in a little over four mil, probably about six because we ended up tripling it. So if you want to come take a look inside, some people might say, well, you just stapled through the plastic. so. What are you doing there? That's gonna actually cause leaks and that's fine. We actually do want the box to drain. We're gonna end up putting holes in the bottom uh, with a screwdriver to be able to let it drain on purpose. Um, but this is actually just more to protect the wood to keep it last, lasting longer. All right, so we got the soil in the box. We went ahead before that obviously and poked the holes in between where these slats are. Now you can see where my slats are underneath and there's probably a good eight to uh, eight or so inches between them. So it is the, I noticed that the aluminum screen has a little belly coming around there. If it looks like that's ever gonna be a problem and I feel like it might have be risking for that aluminum bursting at the bottom, I'll put additional slats underneath to support it. But right now it's holding pretty well. We will come back and do some final touches on it to make it look a little better. We're gonna trim out the edges and uh, across the bottom as well so you don't see those slats anymore. And then we have plans to either turn this into some type of a growing uh, vine type uh, trellis, but as of right now, this is, uh, this is the box, so there you go.